weird anatomy question. I recently had to have an ultrasound of my uterus and they needed me to have a full bladder. Was it just so as obvious which organ was which or is there another reason? Yeah, there's actually another reason for that. So, so when you have an ultrasound done and they are doing it abdominally rather than vaginally, ultrasound is the best way to look at the pelvic organs. And when you are doing that via an abdominal approach, oftentimes they'll do abdominal first, like from the front. So from here, and then if you are having a vaginal ultrasound, that helps actually, it's much, much better for evaluating the uterus and ovaries. But the reason they want you to have a full bladder when particularly when they're doing the abdominal approach is because of the way that ultrasound works. It helps to allow a clearer picture of the uterus by going through the bladder, both by when the bladder is a little bit more full, if you have an antiverted uterus or a forward tilted uterus like this, it pushes it back into a better midline position. And it's just the way that ultrasound works makes it clearer we would know which organ was which because they don't look the same. When you have an ultrasound done, let's see. When you have an ultrasound done, this is a good one. Um, the way that I explain this to patients when I'm doing it, this is done, this one is done, um, this is not an abdominal one, but um, let's see, hang on a second. Let me. Here's here, this one's better. This is the, what we're talking about. So this is a vaginal ultrasound. So these are the pictures that you would get in a vaginal ultrasound. We're gonna have an ad in two minutes. So if you're here and you're going to add, if you'd like to subscribe so you don't get ads, that's great. You can subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime or um, for a monthly subscription or try not to do anything while you're away on your ad so that when you come back, we're still talking about the same thing. This is a vaginal ultrasound. So you can see the transducer here. This is a great picture of the uterus. You can see a great picture of the lining of the uterus. So everything black is, is uh, fluid. There's not a lot of fluid in this photo. Gray is tissue. And if there were bones, it would be bright white. So when you look at it here with a different image, where did that picture go? Okay, this is an abdominal ultrasound and you can see how it's not really as good for seeing like the contours of the uterus, right? But sometimes there's reasons that we don't want to do a vaginal ultrasound. Someone doesn't want one, it's a child. Things that you just, you wouldn't be able to do one and you still wanna get good pictures. So the full bladder here allows for a better image of the uterus, but this is a great picture because you can see everything black is fluid and gray is tissue. You can still see the delineation of things. This isn't bone, it's just, they have their contrast turned up quite a bit, but gray is tissue here. So this is the outside lining of the uterus. This is the cervix, and this is the vagina to cervix to uterine lining. So right here where I'm tracing right, where I'm tracing right now, that's the uterine lining. So you would be measuring that for how thick the uterine lining is, which is relevant to fertility things, which is relevant to people if you have a polyp. Sometimes in postmenopausal people, you would want to know their uterine lining thickness for various reasons. And then here, what they've called the pouch of Douglas, which I don't like that we have all of these men's names that we name body parts after. So we call it the posterior cul-de-sac, which is the space in the pelvis, like inside your abdomen behind the uterus. The reason that's relevant is because if there's free fluid from a ruptured cyst or something, then it will, you'd be able to see the fluid there. So that is why a full bladder helps for a abdominal ultrasound. It just gives us better pictures. But this is a really good example of why a vaginal ultrasound is superior because see how much easier it is to see all those things I just showed you. Ad break in 30 seconds. We're just going to keep talking on this, but so you can see the lining, the outside lining of the uterus really well. You can see the cervix really well. You can see the stripe, the endometrial stripe really well. You can measure it really easily. So it's much, much easier to see via vaginal ultrasound. Um, here's another one. You can see that uterine lining is super thin. This would be what you would expect it to look like if somebody was postmenopausal. This is called a um, trilaminar stripe. So this would be somebody who has recently ovulated or is going to ovulate soon. So see how the stripe has like three very distinct layers that you can see. This is a well estrogenized uterus. 
and it means that you are ovulating or will ovulate soon and that's the way that a lining of a uterus looks when it's built up nicely and waiting on an embryo to implant. What are the major differences in use between transvaginal and pelvic or abdominal? What are maybe the common uses for the... There is no superior use of an abdominal pelvic ultrasound for looking at the uterus tubes or ovaries unless you have a really massive cyst that extends well out of the pelvis. The only reason that it's ever helpful to do it abdominally is in somebody who is really not a good candidate for a vaginal ultrasound. So a child or somebody who is really postmenopausal and that's just going to be very painful. It's not painful in everybody postmenopausal. Somebody who just doesn't want that. Um, but in the absence of a really mitigating factor, a vaginal ultrasound is always going to be superior for looking at a non-pregnant or very early pregnant uterus, tubes, or ovaries. In my pregnancy, when they're checking the length of the cervix, pretty much every time they wanted to do the transvaginal scan because it always looks super short on the abdominal. Yeah, so abdominal scans are really not um, reliable for measuring the cervical length. So I'll show you a picture. And if you think about it, it's just proximity, right? You wanna get the imaging tool as close to what you're looking at as possible. So if you look you can get a decent picture. It's just not as reliable. So, and actually these are all really good pictures. I would venture to say most of the time you don't actually see any that are nearly this good. Like it's, it's hard to get a picture of this good even, and this is not even that great. But so you can see the bladder here. So we learned already everything black is fluid, right? Everything gray is tissue. This is a baby inside here. I can't tell what body part that is. This is the uterus and this is the cervix and they're measuring the cervix. So the cervix is closed, it doesn't have any funneling and that's the length, 3.3 centimeters, which is within a normal range. But I'll show you what a cervical length looks like on a vaginal ultrasound, which is far more helpful and reproducible as far as reliability. So this is obviously a superior image it's small here, but you're going to get a much better measurement on this because you can see it very clearly. The um, the the length is going to be more reliable that way. Um, and like, for example, this is, I keep opening the small image, but this is the, this is a fetal cranium. This is a funneling cervix. So, I mean, if this person was 32 weeks, it's probably less alarming, but if this person is 18 weeks or 19 weeks, this is not a good ultrasound. So you can see how, as opposed to the last one where you could see just a flat line there, this is an open cervix with what we call funneling because it looks like it comes to a V. And then the cervical length would only be here. This is going to be considered a very um, short cervix if you look at the um, readout on the length, but it depends a little bit on like what the gestational age is.